Hello everyone, this is Country Yellow, bringing you another video about Star Trek Online. And as you, if, if, you're, if you recognize this background, you can tell this is going to be another video that's going to suck for me to do. And it was something that was announced just recently, that the weekend store and a couple of other currencies are going to be going away inside the game. And so I, I will talk about what just happened, how this is repeating history from back in 2015, why that's bad for the game, my thoughts on the situation. And so, yeah, because of all that, the lockbox system video that I was going to talk about this week is going to be pushed to next week, hopefully, as long as Cryptic doesn't also do something else stupid next week as well. If Cryptic does something else really dumb, then I will do a video on that instead, and then I'll eventually get to the lockbox system at some point. So anyway, feel free to see that the time links in the description um, to skip around in this video. Anyway, so for the Sam4 Weekly stream, they mentioned a couple things. The big thing was that the single queue events are going to be going away inside the game. They're all going to be rebranded as part of the random, not random, but the feature task force operation system. I labeled that wrong. Um, they're all going to be using the same currency. It's different branding, but it's going to be the same system now for everything. Mirror invasion, instant breach, crystal entities is all going to be part of the featured TFO system. The problem that I don't like about it is the weekend store is going to be going away. The we the weekend events, the Kobayashi Maru and um, the Reno Sonpec are going to be treated just like the red alerts were, which is really dumb. Alongside that, the weekend event store is going away, and all those items are going into Phoenix slot box, which is another stupid thing to do. But we'll, we will get into that. The reason is because right now Cryptic is really pushing the FOMO mentality, or the fear of missing out. <sighs> it's not uncommon in a lot of MMOs. This is one of the biggest ways to keep people active, and especially logging in daily. Basically, like, oh hey, here's a special event going on. If you don't log in today, so you can participate in this event, you're not going to be able to earn this reward right now or ever again. FOMO has exists in a lot of STO. There are two to two recruitment events were, were that way. Delta recruit came back a couple of years ago, which 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 was cool. Um, the feature TFOs were, are are like that. The single queue events were were the old version of, of feature TFOs inside the game. Um, they've made them a bit better in recent years. Before it was that you had to earn the item for every single character, which was unfortunate. Now it's now it, you actually finish the event and, and it's a counter locked. The problem was the weekend store didn't function that way. The weekend store with its two events was a weekend thing that lasted, you know, five, six days and four, five, six, something like that. Um, if, if you did it right, you, you could get like five vouchers during, during, during the time. But the thing was like, this was the only non foma activity that would allow you to earn account unlocked weapons and items. If you miss one weekend event, well, you can, you can just wait for the next weekend event, get your couple of vouchers, and then buy the item from the store that you want, and now it, it, it's an account unlocked for everyone on, on your account. And they're getting rid of that. The weekend store is going away, and all those items are going into Phoenix Lockbox, which means they're all account, or not, not um, the account unlock stuff is gone. It'll, it'll be character uh, unlocks from, from going forward if you didn't unlock this stuff in the previous weekend events. With this loss, the only two places to get encounter locked items is, is the C store and through FOMO events. Yes, technically, if you have a ton of Latinum, you can unlock a Ferengi, or not Ferengi, a very specific um, club dance with lots of Latinum. We are talking about, um, we're talking about combat specific stuff in, in this video. And for combat specific stuff, it's just C store and FOMO events now for account uh, unlocked weapons and items. Now, if you pay attention to the very beginning of this video, you would know that I said we are repeating history, and that's because we are. Back in 2015, Cryptic had, had a similar question, and they approached it in a similar way. They decided to retire, re, retire um, Summer Pearls. I don't know how to say, say that word, but that the Racing Pearls were a little bit abused by some of the community because they were like, hey, um, if you didn't earn a, a summer event the previous year, what you can do is just get several characters to like level, I think 15 is what it was back in back then, be able to participate on Risa. And then you, you can slot 
different starships on different characters, earn Lona Pearls for each one of those characters, and earn several starships at the same time. And characters was like, um, we don't like this. We don't want you to do that anymore. But um, we don't know a good way in our code to do that. So um, how about we just get rid of the currency and we'll add a new currency that has that limitation on it. And that is what they did. As, as they said in there, we want to maintain the exclusivity and collectability of event ships from the summer event each year. AKA, we want to turn the event into a FOMO event, and we have to retire the old currency to do so. Right now, four years later, why are we retiring these four old currencies? Well, all old ceiling queues are going to be retired and rolled into the future TFO um, system going forward. AKA, we want to turn everything that was like a future TFO or could be turned into a future TFO into what, what that is today, into a FOMO type event, and we have to retire the old currencies to do so. Similar type of situation. Again, it's also in summer. And, you know, the coincidence that we're getting a tier six rising Corvette this summer, I don't think is a coincidence at all. They were looking at like, hey, we have this problem. What did we do previously in Star Trek Online to fix this type of problem? Oh, hey, during the summer, we did this type of thing. Oh, so as, you know, potential consolidation for this, this summer we're going to give everyone the Rising Corvette because it's the most customizable ship in the game when it comes to paints. It's kind of consolidation for this. Kind of sucks, to be honest. Um, now, for alternatives from Reddit, the two best ones that I liked was, hey, let, let's just convert all the old um, things into feature TFO co commendations. Because, hey, if it's going from one system to another, just convert them all over. If that's really what you, you care about, just do that. Or, the more ambitious one from Ash, Ashendal, or if, if you say that right, um, is to turn the feature TFO system into the weekend event store. Just make it so that, hey, let's just merge them all together. And say, hey, you get a bazillion of these things, and you, you can cash them in for whatever thing you want to be, be, be account unlocked at any point. That would be better, and no one would really be complaining about it. But no, they didn't want to do that. They don't want to, you to be able to do that because they like the FOMO men mentality of many other MMOs inside, in, in, inside of our world. For my pessimistic thoughts as to why I also don't like this is... They've recently said that 2018 was their second best financial year in the history of Star Trek Online. And they originally said a couple of weeks ago that 2019 is on track to exceed that year's financial numbers. If STO is already having an extremely good financial year right now, then why have they this year removed the Foundry, removed all non-FOMO events, added a Discovery Expansion Pack with less in value than previous versions, and they increased the pricing of standard two Starship um, packs from, from the season with, with the most recent one going up to 5,000 Zen from what you would expect it to be 4,000 Zen. And then alongside that, they've also decided to recently start streamlining content, which, by the way, guys, is code for cutting and removing content from, from the game. Whenever they say streamlining, you could literally just put in cutting or removing content, and it's going to be the exact same thing. Just as an FYI to you all. Why are they doing this? Well, they have a new EP as of last summer, and, and they, he's wanting to change it from logging in weekly and then logging in, in every other day during specific events otherwise it's just logging in weekly and, and, and you're fine to hey let's add the endeavor system so that you should be logging in daily to maximize your stats and then of course you also be logging in daily to participate in all the different events going on throughout the year Kirk doesn't want casual players anymore and so a lot of us veterans who are much more casual players are having or experiencing a lot of STO burnout right now we're like okay, what's the point? This wasn't what STO has been for a super long time. Sure, they're making a lot of money off of it. Is it sustainable? I don't know. And so, well, alongside that, I mean, from what I, I can see over, over here, our EP 
is trying to maximize profit. He's trying to see how much that he, he, he can cut for, from the game and get away with it. If I was being extremely pessimistic, I would think that he's actually trying to make his prof his trying to make his portfolio look really really good, so that he can, can get a better um, position somewhere else that makes more money. But that's just me being super pessimistic here. Anyway, um, alongside that, they're making a bigger emphasis on a lockbox system, and which sucks, especially with the Phoenix lockbox. They're trying to add a bazillion things to that instead of a counter unlock things that they used to have inside the game. So TLDW, with the removal of the weekend store and several other things in the game, the current system in STO, it may be or may not be intentional, but the STO is actively punishing you for not playing earlier in, in the history of the game. If you're a veteran of the game, then you're more rewarded. If not, then you're actively punished repeatedly throughout the game. And they obviously want you to play the three forms of Phoenix Lockbox. Obviously, Phoenix Lockbox, they want you to use if you know you didn't get those account lock things previously. And because there's no alternatives on the exchange for this, you have to play this particular type of lockbox to get the prizes. This is why this one gets the most complaints. R&D promo packs, regular lockboxes. You could just have a couple of handful of people waste a lot of money on those and sell them on, on the exchange. Then the rest of us can buy the Inus piecemeal for a slightly inflated value and not have to pay the full true value of those different things from those lockboxes. When I eventually talk about my lockboxes lock in my lockbox video, I will get into more detail as to why this is very, very bad for the whole health of the game. Alongside all that, because it's much more of character bound stuff instead of account bound, STO is de-incentivizing playing multiple characters. The account is a player thing that they touted a lot back as STLV 2018 is dead. I'm sorry, but if that was their intention back then, it's definitely not now. Account is not the player anymore in STO. Individual captains are, are the player once again inside of this game. Additionally, the Bat for Players announcements are not going to be in regular news and announcements anymore. It's going to be in 10 for weekly videos and buried in patch notes. If they're actually announced at all. Some changes, they just pass on the radar without doing any announcements whatsoever. <sighs> They've done that several times in the past year. But anyway, Martial Dudar, if you aren't playing STO right now, please don't start yet. We really need to see if Cryptic will actually make things better for you going forward. They promise that they will, and that things are in progress. They haven't announced anything yet. Sure, they've done the Tier 6 leveling starships. They haven't added most of the fleet Tier 6 starships to that yet. Just the Sea Store, um, Phoenix Pack, and Lockbox ones. And then the most recent um, six um, fleet ones that were Discovery ones. That's it. They haven't even added the Europa um, fleet one to, to that list yet. Anyway, if you are currently playing STO, um, if, 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 if you're going to buy stuff from the C-Store for account unlock things, please watch these three specific um, videos on my channel. Best Cubine Token Starships, the follow-up to that's that one, the case for Cracked Weapons. The first part of that is kind of a response to about a third, like half of the comments on this video of something that I very much missed. And so I add a lot more ships in this video talking about things I could have included in this one. And then my, my really old video talking about the highest value starship packs from the Sea Store. I am a little bit off on that one and the honorable mention and the bottom one of, the, of this list should be switched because the old command um, battle cruisers from the Sea Store are now terrible versus the most recent ones that, that we've gotten with Discovery. Additionally with that, for, for your FOMO events, if you're ever considering the item or starship available in, in the FOMO event for more than one character on your account, you should complete the event. Okay, whether that's actually doing the four or um, doing the 14 times for the event or buying the um, 10 token pack from, from the C store and then filling in and with four more times playing the event. 
it's going to be much cheaper for you because that, that will allow it to be account unlocked versus waiting for it to eventually go into Phoenix slot box and you know into, into the rare, very rare or epic drops for, from, from that and having to spend about 200 bucks to, to get that starship there if your luck is very good for you which might really really suck for you but um yeah that is my advice if, if you don't care about the item or the starship or the trait or whatever from it then don't worry about it just don't worry about it just saying but anyway um that's my pessimistic look at all this um on the sc web website right now there there's a current prom um, promotion going on that if you do these couple like sign up for a couple different things you can um have a very very low chance of getting some of the SCLV 2018 bridge officers potentially a, um, a command dreadnought cruiser pack and if you're you get the grand prize somehow then you might be able to get two tickets to star trek las vegas 2019 um at, at the end of the summer you might be the lucky one i wouldn't really count on it i did this type of i done with these types of things you know in the past couple of years and i haven't ever gotten anything but hey maybe one of you all might actually get lucky and get some of these good bridge officers um kira is the best one of three she has the same stats as um um sarish mena the, the hollow bridge officer from the uh ds9 lockbox but she is a decent officer for space combat um he has um, two trace they're good there he's just a regular cardassian bridge officer to be honest so not really super special there but anyway um, feel free to like and subscribe hopefully i get that lockbox video out um next week we'll see if cryptid does anything else stupid and dumb anyway thank you all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day